Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiterter, consultant audiologist and director of Clewax. Thank you for joining me in another demonstration video of our recently developed wax scope, which is due to be launched very shortly indeed. If you are interested in the wax scope, feel free to email info at clearwax.co.uk. So I've invited followers and subscribers from my other YouTube channel, my primary YouTube channel, The Wax Whisperer, to join us uh, on this particular video on this channel for two reasons. First of all, I'm going to have quite a rant, I think, during the course of this video about the current state of affairs and play of clinical ear care, if I can call it that, in the UK. Um, but also because this particular case is reminds me of a, a case back in 2015, which actually inspired me to, to develop the, the eye clear scope and subsequently the wax scope. So it evoked quite a few memories. So hopefully I can discuss that as well. But first of all, um, many of you may be aware that uh, yesterday I conducted a poll across social media, so YouTube, Facebook and Instagram, where I um, asked a question um, to members of the public. So it was designed for members of the public, not specialists whether they um, would be happy to be uh, to have their earwax removed by somebody with no previous ear experience or qualifications um, with two days training. And I had a great response, especially on YouTube. I think there's in excess of 1,200 votes. And across all mediums of social media, 90% of you uh, overwhelmingly um, said, no, you wouldn't be happy being treated for earwax with somebody without any previous ear experience or qualifications with two days training. Now, in the UK, you, you for anyone who, who is in the UK, um, you may not be aware, but that's quite common practice actually in the UK. Um, and this a lot of this uh, practice is endorsed uh, and promoted by big national companies. Uh, that's the reality of it. So earwax is not regulated and uh, there's a big financial gain to be made um, in the field of earwax removal, especially because doctors are not really offering the service anymore since the pandemic. So patients, and I, I think it's, I think something needs to be done. I think the NHS somehow, uh, I know they're going through their own difficulties, but be able to provide some level of ear care because not everyone can afford private care. I know growing up, I wouldn't be able to afford it. Um, so, um, but yeah, there's a huge demand in the private sector. So companies are now trying to uh, cash in and they are national companies, guys, I'm not going to name them, who are training um, people with no previous uh, ear experience or qualifications in performing earwax removal. And a lot of this training is uh, over the course of two days. So, for example, I could actually send uh, my clinic manager, um, Tracy, on a course, a uh, two-day course. And so by Thursday, Friday, I could decide to have the day off or actually I'll run front of house and you run the clinic. And she can be treating patients in the reaction removal. Simple as that. And I'm going to explain why how, how hideous that is in a moment. Uh, why it's just not possible and how unsafe it is. So a couple of years ago, um, one national company uploaded a post um, of someone that I know, <laughs> knew from a previous life, should I say, um, who was a receptionist at uh, one of these national companies' branches performing air action removal and getting trained. And I, I was absolutely shocked. And it soon became apparent that this company were um, training complete non-clinicians um, to perform earwax removal um, because of the men. There's money to be made there. There's no, there's no shying away from that. And by training um, support staff or admin staff to do this, this, this role, this task, it would mean that their audiologist um, could continue to dispense hearing aids because if they were removing earwax, then who would be fitting the hearing aids? And in the UK, it, there is a le legal requirement to be a registered hearing aid dispenser to um, prescribe and fit hearing aids in the private sector. So, I mean, they've got their hands in, in, in both pies, really, haven't they, by doing this? But I just couldn't believe that. And, and another national company then followed suit. And it, 
I just couldn't believe it because it's so deeply insulting for professionals like myself that these national companies think it's one possible, two safe and three ethical to train someone with no, absolutely no previous um, uh, ear experience or qualifications to not only perform ear wax removal, but before you can even perform ear wax removal, you need to know about the ear. You need to know um, the physiology, the anatomy, uh, the biology, um, how I, uh, the chemistry behind it, um, all the red flags, the, the, the contraindications. Then before performing ear wax removal, you need to learn how to examine an ear. And it took me weeks, if not months, uh, as an audiological student to feel comfortable in examining uh, patients' ears. There's so many different patients with different ear anatomies, uh, different landmarks. And not only to then to learn the technique and master the, the art of examining someone's ears, but then to start identifying landmarks on the ear, ear, eardrum and what constitutes a healthy eardrum, what doesn't, the different, um, you know, the, the different um, uh, abnormalities that can be detected in the ear. And then also to, to remove earwax, you need to learn all about consent, infection control. There's so much to it. So how is this all possible, guys, in two days? When I wouldn't be able to even feel comfortable examining someone's ear in, in, after two days training. So it's quite remarkable um, that this is actually going on. And what makes it even worse is that the technology these guys are using if you guys think the wax scope view is it's not great, because I know some of you don't like the view, and it's not you can't compare the wax scope to an endoscope, but the view you're you're seeing with the wax scope, believe you me, is absolutely amazing um, compared to what else is out there in the market uh, in, in audiology. Uh, other than a really an ENT microscope, I really really think you'll struggle to get a view as good as the the wax scope. So. The wax scope isn't designed to uh, replace the endoscope. It's designed to be an alternative for people who can't use the endoscope. You cannot beat the endoscope for earwax removal, guys. It's just, you've seen the videos. Uh, and I'm conceding that even with the wax scope. This is not going to beat the endoscope. But there's so many people who struggle to use the endoscope. Anyway, going back to my point. Um, not only is the, the optics shocking, especially when an instrument's introduced in here, you, you can't even, the instrument doesn't even look like an instrument. It's all blurry. It's, it, it's just, it's so surreal. Um, um, but you know, these guys are getting trained to hold this suction probe, what I'm putting in the ear, not by the handle of the suction probe. Remember, this is going to your ear. It's a sharp stainless steel capillary tube. Um, not using the handle of it, but holding the hose pipe uh, attachment that connects to it. And um, a couple of years ago, I demonstrated on the whiteboard, I clipped on a pen to the end of the hose and I held the pen as you would normally hold a pen. And I wrote my name, I think it was, or something, or something I can't remember what I wrote. And I did that also by holding the, the attachment hose um, to the handle. And you can see that I just lost all the fine motor control. So, guys, in the UK, um, you can be treated, you probably are being treated, a lot of you, because these are uh, big national companies nationwide, by people who have no previous um, ear care experience or qualifications, who are using technology. I mean, you can look at, uh, I don't want to name any, anyone, any company in particular, but you can watch their videos if they upload, they don't really upload many, uh, and look at the optics yourself, uh, would you feel comfortable something going into your ear with seeing what they're seeing? Um, in addition, the hygiene um, of that particular instrument, I've got serious questions about because although the speculum is disposable, the instrument's going through a mounting system and that's a lumen. How do you clean that? That needs to be sterilised, what I thought, in between patients. And it's not. So in other words, as you're removing, you can see all the wax on the, the suction tube here that comes through the speculum, that it comes through another fixed, permanent fixture of this instrument. So all that gooey wax, or imagine if it's an infection, it's going to be sticking to the mounting system of where the speculum attached to, attaches to. Then that same instrument, um, same device is going to be used on another patient, given as another suction probe, but that suction probe is going to travel through this mounting system, it's going to pick up all that horrible wax and infection and transfer it from one ear to the other. Um, 
so you've got all these things happening and our uh, voluntary membership body, and I'm not going to name them, they are supporting this. They are accrediting these courses um, who openly advertise um, that they will train someone um, with an NVQ Diploma 2 or equivalent, which basically means someone with, uh, I think it's, it's the equivalent is a, a single GCSE. On the website, they stipulate that they have to be within a care, care a healthcare setting, but that's not true because I've had umpteen, um, and we've got all the emails, people who have been trained by this company. It ranges from people who work in sales, marketing, clearly not healthcare settings, uh, ex-police officers, car sales um, room um, managers, you name it. Um, they, they have been trained by this company. Um, I've got the evidence because they, they are then contacting Clearwax ourselves, wanting to get trained by ourselves because they see the difference in technology, the clarity of view, both with the endoscope and wax scope. So they want to upskill themselves because they struggle with what they're, what they're using. We flatly refuse. Now, everything I'm saying to you today, I'm actually financially speaking anyway, shooting myself in the foot because I develop earwax removal um, visualization um, equipment like the iClearscape, Waxscape, instruments coming soon. I offer training. I have a website where people can um, off, um, can advertise their services and we charge them a fee for that. So by speaking out, I'm actually not doing myself any service, but there's a thing called ethics and morals, which uh, I'm not going to sacrifice in the pursuit of money. Um, now, we have been approached by some of these national companies they know our criteria. We are not budging. That is like, we're not going to be training uh, the people who they are currently um, have out on the, uh, who, who they have currently trained. It's not happening. No way, Jose. That is not happening. So, yeah, and our um, uh, membership uh, body, voluntary, uh, voluntary at least, are, are crediting these courses, guys. How is that even right? Um it's shocking. And they're claiming that three quarters of the members who responded to a poll, uh, which I need to get more information about this poll, feel that this is OK, um, that um, they can endorse them. They can include them on a register that they're looking to do. So these non, they, they call it associate, associate wax members. They can enroll and register their, themselves on this membership body um, to give them a bit more kudos, I would suspect. So um, how is that? Even I can't believe three quarters of my members have actually voted for that. I've not come across one yet. Um, everyone who I'm speaking to, I put a link post up on LinkedIn. Everyone's against this. So uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm dubious. I really am. Um, anyway, so that's the rant. Um, so I'm making a public stance. Probably not doing myself any favors. Um, probably going to be a targeted person now. It doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. Sometimes you just have to speak the truth um, and do what's right. Um, I'm going to briefly explain why this video uh, is quite an important um, video for me. Uh, so do bear with me. So the case you just saw was of a very difficult case. The patient had really, really narrow, bendy, twisty ear canals and the earwax was severely impacted. And Many years ago, when I was first performing earwax removal with head loops, I had a case just like this um, and I couldn't do it. And I just couldn't really see very well with the loops. I didn't feel comfortable and the loops were not very great. And the training was a horrendous that I got. I don't know how I even got a certificate. I really didn't, apart from turning up on the day, I didn't really do much else. And I was still like, uh, awarded a pass. In any case, I chucked those um, loops in the bin and that's what really inspired me and my colleagues to then develop the, the eye clear scope and then the wax scope. So when this patient attended, I was very keen to perform the procedure with the wax scope. 